Good morning. Today we're starting a brand new chapter on geometry. Geometry comes from a Latin word, geometria, which means the measurement of earth. And that gives us a little sneaky peek as to what this chapter is about. We're going to start looking at how the maths, which is all around us as we're discovering more and more every day, can be represented through the use of diagrams some of which you've actually got quite familiar with already. So we're going to start off by looking at something that's called a plane. Now, we don't mean the plane that you get in to go on a lovely flight somewhere nice and hot. We mean a flat, two-dimensional surface. So in other words, something like a piece of paper. See how that is flat? It has two dimensions. It has a length and a width. And onto that plane, we can actually represent, which is the special word that we use in mathematics, which means draw. So we can draw, we can represent lots of mathematics onto that plane. Or like your piece of paper, we can draw some objects onto it. Now, whilst the piece of paper that we might use to draw some homework or a diagram has ends, it might be an A4 size, but a plane can actually go on forever and ever and ever in all directions. So if you imagine your piece of paper just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going on forever and ever, then that is the plane that we're going to be talking about when we use mathematics. And onto that surface then, we can draw lots of different things, lots of shapes, patterns, points, and we're going to be learning a lot about all of those in the next couple of weeks. So on our plane, our flat two-dimensional surface, we might be interested in a particular location. So what can we do to describe that location so that everybody knows exactly where we're talking about? Well, that's where points come into play. So a point pinpoints an exact location on a plane. So for example, this here, which as you can see is like a slightly larger full stop, that is a point lying on this plane. And you can see I have three of them there. And that tells me that I want an exact location. I don't want over here, I want here. Now we have another problem because as you can see, there's quite a few points. So how can I distinguish between one and another? Well, what we need to do is we need to label them. So we're going to learn how to mathematically notate, which we know means to label points onto a plane. And we do this by using capital letters. Okay, so now I have notated my three points. So notice how I've used a capital letter for each of these points, and I've had to use a different letter, otherwise we might get mixed up. For example, this one couldn't be A as well as that one, otherwise how will I know which one I'm talking about? So when we are talking about points, or we're referring to them, we will give them a capital letter, and if I was to ask you, okay, everybody, point on your screen to the point Z, then hopefully you will all point up here and we all know exactly where we're talking about on this plane. Sometimes you'll be told what to label them with and sometimes they'll already have their capital letters given to you in a question, for example, and other times it will be up to you to label them. And as long as the capital letter hasn't been used already, then you can pick whichever letter that you would like. Okay, so quick recap. So our plane is a flat, two dimensions. It goes up and down and it goes left and right. So that means it has length and width, but it's no thickness. It's completely flat and it goes on and on forever in all directions. And then a point then is a location, an exact position onto that plane. And this has no dimensions. It's just one point. So there's no length or width to our points. And we denote it, so we notate or label it, with a capital letter and a dot. So if I look at this little plane that I've got here, and there we go, we've got two dots 
and capital letters. Therefore, we have points A, which is exactly there, and point B, which is here. Now, as we can't draw something that goes on forever and ever and ever, we can never get to the end of it because it will keep going on forever. So we're just representing a plane by showing uh, a piece of, of the plane like this. So it looks like a piece of paper. Okay, so the next really important part of geometry is a line. Now, contrary to what you might think, no one in this class or watching this video, or in fact, anyone in the world has ever drawn a line. Yep, that's correct. Because a line never ever ends. It goes from minus infinity, so if you went to the left, it would go all the way and keep going to the left and never ever stop. And likewise, if you look to the right, it would keep going all the way uh, up to positive infinity and never ever stop there either. So you can always go one further, make it slightly bigger and bigger. So a line can't possibly be drawn because it never ends. So it has no what we call end points, a start or a finish. So what is it then that we do draw when we draw something on a page? Or if your teacher says, um, draw a line underneath this diagram or draw a line halfway down your page. Well, what they should actually be saying is to draw a line segment. That's a section of a line. So back to our plane that we've been looking at. Notice how I've now connected my point H to point Z. So what I have actually drawn here is a small part of a line because we know it can't actually be a line because it wouldn't end at Z or H. It would keep going forever and ever in this direction and forever and ever in that direction. So this is a line segment. Okay, so can I get you all to point to the line segment? Hmm. But which one, miss? I can hear you say. Hmm. Okay, so we've discovered another problem because you can see that there are now two line segments on this plane. The line segment up here, which starts at the end point H and continues on for a distance which we can actually measure. We can measure it using our ruler, for example, and it goes up and ends then at point Z. Or we've got this one here that goes from A to C. So we're going to have to learn how to notate line segments so that we also know which one we're talking about. And we do that by using the end points. It's quite simple. We write down the two end points, the one from the first side and the one then at the other end. And we put them side by side together. And then we have to use some something that we call a square bracket around both of those letters. And that square bracket means this is an end point. And this is what it would look like. So we put one end point, the other end point, side by side, remember that they're capital letters. And then we put these square brackets. So instead of the curved brackets that you're used to using in English, when we write sentences, they're completely horizontal and vertical. And that means if we have a square bracket around a capital letter, it's telling us that that letter is an end point. So as both of them have an, a square bracket around them, then we know that both H and Z are end points. So together, this mathematical notation here says the line segment from endpoint H to endpoint Z. And likewise, then, we have the line segment AC. OK, so as we know, this, these line segments are just parts of a line. It's like a small part that we've taken from it. So what if I actually want to talk about the whole thing, the whole line instead? How could I explain, well, the line segment A and C, but continuing on in both directions? Hmm. We're going to have to come up with a better way of explaining a line. 
how can we notate, so use of mathematical language and symbols, to show instead a line. So it's going to be continuing on past this point A all the way to forever and ever, and likewise through to C. And we've already discussed that we can't possibly draw that. It would take us our entire lives and we would unfortunately die before we finish. So, yes, we could continue to draw right up to the end of our plane, but there's a better way of doing that. And there we have it. All we need to do is to extend our line segment just slightly so it's going beyond our two points. So, in other words, we can never ever have an end point. So we don't put any points at the ends. We make sure that we just continue on with this straight pencil measurement and we have run it through two points. And they could be any points whatsoever lying on this line because if you think about it, every little bit of this line is actually a point. And in fact, that's the correct definition of a line. A line is a set of infinite points going on and on forever. So points keep going and they build up and create this entire line. So instead of ending at A and ending at C, I've just extended it a little bit, but then how do we label it? Well, it's quite simple. We pick those two points on that line. And again, it could be any two points on that line. And we, like we did with the line segment, we write them side by side, but this time, they're not endpoints. So we're not going to put the square brackets around them. And that's it. AC represents this line. Whereas the square brackets around both A and C represents the line segment, just this small part in between the two endpoints A and C. Now, sometimes we might not be given a number of points on the line. So instead, we can actually label a line without considering or picking out two points. And we do that using letters again, like we did with points, but we don't want to get them mixed up with our points. So a line uses a small lowercase letter, like the letter L. The letter L is the most commonly used letter to show a line and we usually write it somewhere close to the edge of the section that we have drawn like here now of course it doesn't have to be the letter l because if you suddenly had four lines on your plane how will we know which one is l if they're all called l so we could pick any other letter as long as we remember it's a small letter lowercase so no capitals so quite often you might see a line L, line M, line N, or maybe pick the first letter of your name, but make sure it's small. Now we have one more geometrical representation to look at. And I have just changed something about the diagram up here. Notice how I've extended it through beyond the point H. That means it's no longer the line segment HZ. But I haven't extended it through Z, so it's not a line either. What we have here is one end point. See how the, the solid pencil line is not going past it, so it's ending here. So that's definitely an end point. But it's not got an end point at the other side. So this is actually suggesting then that whilst it ends at Z, this direction is passing through H and in fact, that's continuing on and on forever in that one direction. Well, that means that this is called something very special, another keyword, and it's called a ray. Okay, so let's notate our ray. Well, we know that there's an endpoint Z and we know that we put a square bracket around any endpoints. But we also learned that if a line section goes through a point, that we don't put a square bracket around it. 
So this is what array looks like in terms of mathematical notation or labels using symbols. We have one capital letter without the square bracket because it's not an endpoint. It's going through it and carrying on. And then we have the end point where we have our square bracket around. Now, it's important to note that the direction for our line or our line segments even, it doesn't matter. We talked about the line segment AC, but that's exactly the same representation as the line segment CA going the other direction. You would still end up looking and measuring or identifying the same space that I am right now. And that's the same for our line. So, so far, we have looked at this line could be called L. Or it could be named after two of the points that lie on it. So, AC, no square brackets. But we could also go in the other direction too. So, it could also be called CA. And that's absolutely fine too. So, we've got a number of ways that we can label this same line. Now with our ray, if we were to change the direction, so instead of reading from left to right, so we pass through the H first, and it's not an endpoint, so no square bracket, and it ends at Z, we could go the other direction, which means we start with Z, and we know that that's an endpoint, and it passes through our H. And that's exactly the same diagram, the same representation that we're looking at here. So both would be correct. I've added something new to our plane and it's this here. Thinking about what we've just learned, what have I just drawn? Is it a point? Is it a line segment? Is it a ray or is it a line? Did you say line? Well, if you did, well done. But how did we know? Well, this is what gave it away. We've got a lowercase letter, a small m. And we know that a small letter is used to show that something is in fact a line. Sometimes you might see arrows being put on the ends of our lines and that sometimes is quite helpful because it reminds us that they do in fact go on forever and ever but they're not always there. So it's important to look out for the correct notation. So to look out for either a small letter or that there are two points being identified or more onto the section that's been drawn, but not at the ends. And that will still mean it is a line. So do you notice that our line M and our line L, that they cross? Well, that brings us to a very important new keyword, and that is intersect. They intersect when they cross over. You might have heard sometimes on the in the movies or perhaps um, if you've been to America abroad and they might talk about crossroads that we know um, when you're driving on the roads that cross like this, but they call them an intersection. Well, hopefully that will help you to remember the keyword. The intersection means where something cross, they intersect each other. And we can locate the exact place where these two lines intersect. And it's exactly there. And that has created what we call a point of intersection. And we can label that point. There are only two letters that I cannot use to label it. Can you think which two? Yeah, I can't label it C or A because we've already got them here. So I'm going to label it capital P. Remember, all our points must be capital letters and something that we've not used already on that one diagram or that one question.
You're doing so well. You've learnt so much today already. We just have two more things that we're going to look at. The first is that we can refer to the number of points that are on the same plane. So we know that our plane, I'm representing everything on this piece of paper. So this is my plane. We know that the plane in reality goes on forever and ever, just like these two lines do. But we can't produce a piece of paper that big. Now, on my plane, I have several points. And that means that those points are what we call coplanar. Co means together. And together, these points A, C, P, Z and H are all on the same plane. So they're together on the plane. They are coplanar. So H, Z, A, C and P, all capital letters, so we know there are points. They're coplanar, they're on the same plane. Now we can also refer to points that lie on the same line. Well, if they lie on a line, then we call them collinear. And if you look at how it's spelt, co meaning together, and it has the word line in it. So together they lie on the line. Now I have written two statements. H and Z are collinear. A, C and P are collinear. Only one of them is correct. Which one do you think it is? It's the bottom one. But why? Why is H and Z not collinear? Well, because H and Z are not on a line. They are on a ray. So the second one is correct. So just a quick recap. So a ray is part of a line starting at one end point and going on forever in one direction. So you can see that this is a ray here and this is CD and we have the square brackets around C. It's an end point, but it's going through D and on forever. And like we said that we could use arrows on both ends of a line, we could also put an arrow here to show and going on forever and ever. And then we know that a line segment then has two end points. So both points will require square brackets and we could say either from left to right, A, B, or we could say from right to left, B, A. And we're still going to think of the exact same section. And then last of all, we learned about the point of intersection where two lines, rays, or line segments, they cross each other. What's crossing here? It's two lines because of the lowercase p and the lowercase r and they're meeting exactly in the middle at point A. We can easily measure a line segment, but we can't measure a ray or a line because part or all of it goes on forever. But we can use a measure, uh, a ruler, sorry, to measure our line segments. So for example, if a line segment AB, like this one here, if we put our ruler on it and it measures six centimeters, then we would notate that like this. Notice how we no longer have our square brackets, but what we have are two exact little straight lines or line segments as we know now going down. Now in maths, that means the measure of and what's inside. So the measure of the distance between our points A and B equals six centimeters. One last thing before you go, just for fun. Why was the decimal afraid to marry the fraction? Because he thought he'd have to convert. Thanks for listening. See you in class tomorrow.